You're watching Tag TV. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surbhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 6th of February. Swine flu claims 14 lives in India's northern Punjab province. Anti-Pakistan protests held in London against illegal occupation of Pakistan administered Kashmir. And US President ties troop withdrawals in Afghanistan to progress in these talks. And now for all the details. At least 14 people have died due to swine flu in India's northern Punjab province, with 36 people tested positive for the deadly virus. Special measures are being taken by authorities to tackle the outbreak in the province. At least 14 people have died due to swine flu in India's northern Punjab province, health authorities said on Wednesday. A health official in Ludhiana city said blood samples of 69 suspected patients were tested for swine flu, out of which 36 patients turned out to be positive. An alert has been issued by the provincial health department to establish special swine flu wards for the patients in the hospitals. Abhi thak 69 cases suspected are chuke hain, jin mein se 36 confirmed hai aur 6 ki death hui hai. अगर आप out of district and out of state के patient में लाते हो तो थोड़ा तायदात नंबर ज़्यादा आ जाएगा और उसमें चौदह की death हो चुकी है अभी तक। The symptoms of swine flu include high fever, cough, sore throat, body ache, nausea, vomiting and respiratory problems. The 2009 global outbreak of swine flu or H1N1 virus had claimed over 17,000 lives including 2,725 in India between May 2009 and November 2010. An anti-Pakistan protest was held by activists on Tuesday in London to demand an end to Pakistan's illegal and forceful occupation of Pakistan-administered Kashmir. The protesters also highlighted atrocities being meted on innocent people in the region for voicing their concerns and demanding their rights. Activists held a protest outside 10 Downing Street in London on Tuesday against Pakistan's illegal occupation of Pakistan-administered Kashmir. The protesters shouted pro-freedom slogans blaming Pakistani security forces of enforced disappearance and extrajudicial killings of people in the illegally occupied territory. They also expressed concerns over Islamabad's discriminatory policies for the past 70 years and raised voice against exploitation of natural resources through so-called infrastructure projects in the region. Pakistan, which illegally annexed Pakistan-administered Kashmir six decades ago, continues to deny basic amenities to the people. However, it claims to have given autonomous rights to the region, but in reality treats it as its colony with no honor being accorded to residents. Pashtun activists recently held protests in Canada to condemn the killing of Arman Loni, a prominent leader of Pashtun Tahafuz movement, by Pakistan security forces. Pashtuns have long blamed Pakistani military of a widespread human rights violation in federally administered tribal areas and Balochistan. The Pashtun Council Canada recently held protests in Canada's Mississauga city to condemn the killing of Arman Loni, a prominent member of the Pashtun movement. Arman Loni, a human rights activist and a leader of Pashtun Tahafuz movement, was killed on Saturday in Balochistan region as police tried to break up a four-day demonstration against forced evictions. The protesters in Canada also highlighted the injustice done to thousands of Pashtuns by the Pakistan establishment, which continues to arrest innocent people and put them in detention centres. Baloch Sindhi and other activists also joined the protest to show their solidarity to the Pashtun community. We progressive people, prog progressive pe persons from Afghanistan, from Pakistan, from India, from Canada, are here today to demand an international inquiry 
for such atrocities. Pashtun Tahafuz movement started a year ago with a number of young individuals gathering together to demand the release of missing Pashtuns. The Pashtuns have long blamed Pakistani security forces of widespread human rights violations including enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings in federally administered tribal areas and Balochistan. In news from Afghanistan, US President Donald Trump has said his administration is holding constructive talks with groups in Afghanistan including with the Taliban for peace and stability in the country. In his annual State of the Union address, Trump said he is not sure whether an agreement will be achieved, but he is aware the hour has come to at least try for peace. US President Donald Trump on Tuesday said his administration is holding constructive talks with groups in Afghanistan, including the Taliban, and would be able to reduce the US troop presence and focus on counterterrorism as it makes progress. Trump, in his annual State of the Union address, said, he is not sure whether an agreement will be achieved, but he is aware that after two decades of war, the hour has come to at least try for peace. The president in his speech also said that he has accelerated negotiations with the Taliban to reach a political settlement now. In Afghanistan, my administration is holding constructive talks with a number of Afghan groups, including the Taliban. As we make progress in these negotiations, we will be able to reduce our troops' presence and focus on counter-terrorism, and we will indeed focus on counter-terrorism. Trump's remarks come a week after he announced he would bring American troops home if a peace deal was reached to end 17 years of war in Afghanistan. According to U.S. Special Envoy Zalmay Khalil Zad, the United States and the Taliban have sketched the outlines for an eventual peace accord. But there is no sign so far that the group has accepted key U.S. demands. Meanwhile, talks for Afghan peace kicked off on Tuesday in Moscow, where former Afghan President Hamid Karzai and Taliban leadership took part. The talks come 10 days after peace negotiations between the United States and Taliban ended in Doha. Taliban Afghan talks kicked off in Russia's Moscow city on Tuesday with the attendance of the Afghanistan's former president, Hamid Karzai, and Taliban leadership. The talks were panned by the Afghan government as a betrayal and Russian authorities shunned attendance in a top level. The talks come 10 days after peace negotiations between the United States and the Taliban ended in Doha. We, are, we, are, we, were, we had a good gathering of Afghans today. A very good meeting and officially we'll be talking later on. The push for peace comes as the Taliban, ousted by US-led forces in 2001, have staged near-daily attacks and are in control of or are contesting districts across nearly half the country. Meanwhile, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani has said the Afghan politicians attending the Moscow talks have no executive authorities and are not officially representing Afghanistan, local media reported. Ghani said a peace deal with the Taliban will not be implemented unless there is a nationwide consensus. A two-day-long annual Buddhist festival, Dasmoche, was recently celebrated in India's northern Leh region to mark the damnation of the evil. The festival was attended by locals as well as the tourists hailing from across the country and abroad. Scores of tourists and locals recently gathered in Himalayan desert town of Leh in India's northern Jammu in Kashmir province to take part in the celebrations of an annual Buddhist festival, Dosmoche. The two-day-long festival is celebrated in the courtyard of Leh Palace to mark the damnation of the evil. During the festival, Buddhist monks prepare offerings to bind evil, hungry ghosts and protect humanity from natural disasters. They also play music, perform famous mass dance and pray for happiness and prosperity in the whole world. Today we are celebrating the Dosmoche, which is very far and far away from the place to see it. The meaning of Dosmoche is that in the world and in the country, in the country, in the country, there is no epidemic, no 
बीमारियों से बचे और पूरे संसार में सुख और शांति का माहौल रहे Tourists from across the world visit the Himalayan desert to explore the raw beauty of the region and witness the famous mask dance which is one of the key attractions of the festival. This festival is celebrated every year at the start of the Tibetan New Year in the month of February. A group of seven Indian artists has worked with discarded materials to produce replicas of the seven wonders of the world in New Delhi. As part of Indian government's Clean India initiative that began last year the artists used scrap from poles to pipes iron bars spare car parts to create the masterpieces A group of seven artists has come together to create replicas of seven wonders of the world in Indian capital New Delhi The South Delhi Municipal Corporation or SDMC has converted a landfill site into a park to house the replicas. The park features replicas that include Taj Mahal, Christ the Redeemer statue in Brazil, the Great Pyramid of Giza, Rome's famous Colosseum, the Statue of Liberty, Eiffel Tower and the Leaning Tower of Pisa. In Delhi mein abhi aap dekh rahe honge to scraps bahut zyada hai aur gaadiyan kitni sari hai day by day kitni nikalti hai. तो उनका कुछ ऐसा प्लान था कि एस का कुछ ऐसा स्क्रैप जो बुरी जगह पड़ा हुआ है वो एक अच्छी जगह प्लेस हो जाए और लोगों को अवेयरनेस मिले कि हाँ यार ये कुछ अच्छी चीज़ हमने देखने के लिए एक पार्क वगैरह जो भी बना वो सारा स्क्रैप से यूज़ हुआ है मतलब वेस्ट वगैरह ये पड़ा रहता था सो एस ने अच्छा प्लान किया इस इस साइड में हम लोग का दिखाया था सो ये वाला जगह पर आपने सेवन वंडर्स बनाना है The park which is planned to run to natural energy such as solar panels and windmills is expected to attract thousands of visitors. The initiative is part of Indian government's Clean India project aimed to incorporate work with and create an awareness of discarded materials in the city. The fish sellers in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province have been witnessing a surge in demand for traditional dry fish hogard as temperatures drop further in the valley. The fish arrives in the market shortly after winter sets in and stays till the month of April. The fish sellers in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province have been witnessing a surge in demand for traditional dry fish hogard as temperatures drop further in the valley. People in the valley relish dry vegetables, smoked fish and wild herbs to cope with the extreme winters as they have longer shelf life and fresh vegetables are rarely available in the market. The dry fish arrives in the market shortly after winter sets in and stays till the month of April. It is rich in proteins and vitamins and especially helpful in curing flu, asthma and chest ailments. Kashmir mein takriban 3-4 mahine sardi ka mausam hota hai. इसलिए यहाँ पर सूखी सब्जी सूखी मच्छी खाते हैं इसलिए कि ताकि चेस्ट भी ठीक रहे और कभी कभार रास्ता भी बंद हो जाता है उसकी वजह से हमें मतलब सब्जी का इंतज़ार नहीं करना पड़ता है सूखी मछली तो यहाँ पहले से ही चलता है ये यह यहाँ का बहुत पुराना रिवाज है लोग यहाँ खाते हैं क्योंकि यहाँ मतलब वो बाकी सब्जियाँ थोड़ा शार्ट होती है इस करके मछली लोग खाते हैं Dried fish is an important part of Kashmir's rich cultural heritage. Kashmiri cuisine is incomplete without the dried and smoked fish in winters. The roads in the landlocked Jammu and Kashmir province also get blocked due to heavy snowfall, cutting off supply of essential commodities. Hence, residents stock up on dry foods which can be stored for 4 to 6 months to get them through the extreme winters. Well that's the way it was in South Asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again Swine flu claims 14 lives in India's northern Punjab province Anti Pakistan protests held in London against illegal occupation of Pakistan and Uttar Kashmir And US president ties troop withdrawals in Afghanistan to progress in peace talks. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.